First and foremost, I want to start off this series by saying the obvious. I forgot to add the polls in the description of the last video. I think you guys can kind of tell by some of the videos that have gone up, maybe the lack of editing on said videos, that I've had a lack of time over the past week, which sucks because when I start a new series, I love it to be everyday uploads, you know, full steam ahead at the beginning of a series, but unfortunately, time-wise, it just didn't line up. Regardless, I thank you tremendously for your support with this series so far, and we are still going to be able to make the best of it despite those polls not being included, and again, for that, I apologize. You guys have been tremendous as well with the comment section, and of course you took advantage of the comment section to still voice your opinion on what you thought the set rules for this series should be, and because of that, I've taken all the comments and suggestions from the first few episodes, and we do now have a crafted rule set for this series. It's not anything ridiculous, of course, you know, nothing over the top. But taking all the ideas, there might be some ideas here that, you know, were relatively popular that you're not going to see. But for the most part, you know, this is a rule set really crafted by you guys. The first thing I want to point out here, and I'm not going to put up one comment on screen in particular because there were a couple of comments that suggested this. When it comes to the idea of getting more money to spend if we're successful and make the playoffs, I'm not going to go with that. And simply put, because how often... Can you really imagine Eugene Melnick making a profit and putting the money where it's supposed to go? That is a very obvious reference to some of his incredibly shady dealings. So we're not going to do that. The set rules that you are going to find in the description are what we're going with. And of course, we're going to talk about them right here and right now. Now, first and foremost, the last episode was most likely highlighted by the addition of the uh, Alexi Lafreniere trade. Alexi Lafreniere, really the highlight of the last episode, and no doubt, am I even allowed, I don't know why I kept going to the wrong spot, you know, no doubt there was some talk over whether or not there should be some limitations or not on trading. In this series, there aren't going to be limitations. I have full freedom to do whatever I want in terms of trading, but of course, if you've watched a series of mine before, you know my trading habits in terms of trying to take advantage of who's listed on the trade block by other teams to really maximize uh, the value that we get in any particular deal. So in terms of like, oh, should I have been allowed to do the Lafreniere trade? Most of you agree anyway. Let's be honest, you know, Tierney and the draft pick that we gave up and, you know, versus Lafreniere. I mean, obviously, if we stuck with Chris Tierney and we didn't do that obvious trade, it just would have been making things more difficult for the sake of making it difficult. That trade really was a no-brainer. And for the moment, we have a new face of the franchise, but the question's going to be long-term. Just how long is he going to be sticking around once we get into the money situation? But there is also now a new way that we're able to lose players, and I really did like this suggestion. There is going to be... More than one wheel involved in this series. And the first one's going to be the controversy wheel. And I do love this idea. Every player and every staff member is going to be listed on the wheel that we're going to spin at a random time throughout the season. And honestly, what I might do is at the beginning of a season, we'll have every month listed September to February. Because really, that's about the time frame that you could trade a player, of course. But we're going to have every player listed. We'll see what month the controversy is going to take place in. And from there, if a player is selected, they're gone. We'll use the trade finder if possible, but they are immediately dealt. If it's a coach, they're going to be replaced with the lowest possible rated replacement for the rest of the season. And if it's a scout, we're not going to be able to hire a replacement for the rest of the season. Now, in terms of of the coaching staff and the scouting department there's been a lot of talk to about having limitations and here's what we've come up with for coaches i'm not going to be allowed to pay coaches more than their asking price that's going to limit my ability of course to have a top-notch uh, coaching staff and really kind of mirror the real life issues that we've seen in ottawa so we're going to see some turnover here with these coaches of course but just how good of a coaching department am i going to be able to get we don't yet know and for scouts, big change here, we're going to go one scout per region for this series. So now you see why it's so important that if we lose a W scout, 
we're not going to be able to scout any more players from the W for the rest of that season, and it's really going to limit our amount of options. So the controversy wheel is going to play a major part in this series because, God damn it, the Ottawa Senators can't go a year without having some sort of negative publicity. <laughs> it, it really is phenomenal. Now, we are moving into the re-sign phase, but before we get to that, I do want to mention this as well. We talked about it in the draft, whether or not Eugene Melnick is going to be able to meddle. And really, you know, in real life, does Eugene Melnick meddle in their draft? Probably not. It probably is more of like an Edmonton thing where, of course, oh, no, we're taking Yakupov, not Ryan Murray. But what we're going to do is Eugene's going to get one random pick from our top five picks in the draft. So if I have three first rounders, there's a very good shot that we're gonna lose a first round pick. That will be decided via wheel spin, and I'm not allowed to just say, oh, not signing the player. We absolutely have to sign that player. And for free agency, we already talked about it pretty much, but we're not gonna be able to offer a player more than their asking price. So that's gonna be a pretty big factor as well. With that said, let's move into the re-sign phase, and we'll talk about these particular rules as we go along here. Again, you can find all these in the description. I know it's a little bit of information overload, but of course, throughout the series, you know, you'll, you know, it'll just be there in the background, right? So, here's the deal: the salary cap for this upcoming season is ninety million dollars. Now, of course, the floor we'll get a better look at here in a moment, but we're going to keep it so that I can only spend five million dollars over the cap floor. Of course, that number will continually go up, but you know, five million is the hard limit on that. The max contract is what we needed to find out, and the answer is this: Thomas Shabbat makes eight million dollars now. The salary cap is ninety million, so the set percentage for this series is nine percent. Thomas Shabbat makes like eight point eight 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 nine ish. Might have missed a few eights there of the cap in terms of percentage. So that's going to be the limit, is 9%, the max contract, no greater than 9% of our team's total cap. So, yeah. I don't know what we're going to be able to do about Lafreniere. Thank God the Bobby Ryan contract will be up, but, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that only factors in so much, too. It's going to be very interesting to see how we're able to make this happen. And, of course, another rule we knew as well, if someone doesn't want to resign, they're gone. So Ron Hainsey will not be returning to the team, and the 85% trick is the key. If a player is not willing to take a team-friendly deal, they're on the way out. Those are the set rules for this series. Will it change? Will it evolve as we continue on? Perhaps, you know, perhaps, maybe, maybe so, maybe not. Who's, who's to say? We'll find out, but again, based off all the suggestions that I've seen in the comments section for the beginning episodes of this series, that is what we're going with. And again, if me just you know, spouting the information at you isn't the best way for you to register the information, check it out in the description. With that said, let's see what's up here. You know what? We're going to go with, we're going to advance a day and we're going to try to make the best of this, this episode. Let's get it underway. It's our first real off season with the team. And I'm going to be very intrigued to see what we look like heading into next season. Now, the first thing we're going to do, it's the obvious thing. We are going full fire sale with this coaching department. In fairness, it's not, or uh, the coaching staff, I should say. You know, not the worst NHL staff, but all in all, I think it makes sense to make this change. And honestly, I am going to fire every scout as well for the moment. You might hear the dog in the background. you got to love it. Emmy, calm down. Calm down. I'm going to have to let her out of the room here. Here, allow me to fire all these coach or all these scouts, and then uh, I'll be back. All right, that is done. Our scouting department is completely reset. We're going to have to hire everybody fresh and new. We'll figure that out uh, in a moment, of course, when we're actually allowed to. For now, though, the task at hand. Craig Anderson is gone. Who our starting goalie is going to be for the next season? I have no idea. Fair play to Craig Anderson, having a 900 save percentage this past season. But his time in Ottawa is done. Uh, Joey or Joel DeCordy goes by both. We might as well bring him back. There's no real reason not to. Of course, 85% trick for, I would say, for uh, ah, for, for two-way deals, not as important. We'll keep DeCord in the system for now. Though, of course, Shogard will be signed next year. We have Bednar and then Shaw as the medium elite that we picked up in the last draft. For defensemen, we know Ron Hainsey is on the way out. Mark Borowiecki, we will look to bring back. I mean, Eugene's favorite player, clearly. 
two years at 2.4 is not exactly ideal. I am allowed to change the years as much as I want. I'm gonna try to bring him back for one year and we'll see if he takes the 85%. That would drop it down to basically two million flat. And we'll see if Borowiecki is willing to take that deal. Christian Yaros, uh, we will definitely be bringing back. Three years is the ideal number for me because he'll maintain RFA status and this number should be 1.4 off the 85% trick. Pretty good deal for him. Not uh, not against that. Jacob Bernard Docker will likely be signed next year, perhaps after. Andreas Anglin, medium seventh at this point. Honestly, I'm going to hold on to him for the sake of just having a familiar face in the AHL. That'll help morale for now when we have so many changes. Hubert Labrie is gone for obvious reasons. And that's it for the defense, so not too bad. For the wingers, Jordan Schwartz, we already knew, was going to be on the way out. For Connor Brown, let's see what he's looking at here. We're going to try to go for a one-year deal. That way he's an RFA at the end of next year as well, as long as it doesn't like awkwardly glitch out, which I haven't had much trouble with that, but some people have. Uh, 2.6 million for him. People really wanted Scott Sabarin to come back, so we will hold on to Scott Sabarin. Three-year deal. He'll continue to be the captain of the AHL team. For the left wings, now Anthony Duclair wants to come back. The question is how much money does he want? Four by four is not bad. I can't believe Anthony Duclair is only 24 years old. It feels like he's been around for so long. But obviously, you know, Arizona, then Columbus. It's been a very interesting journey for one Anthony Duclair. Now this amount of money, this, this could be interesting. 3825 for Duclair, though at four at four years would be fantastic. So if he's willing to accept that, I'm good with it. Lafreniere will obviously be signed, you know, in terms of, oh, do we need a center or a winger more? I mean, it, we would have been dumb to turn down Lafreniere. And of course, in terms of top-notch centers, we'll get to who we have in a moment. Uh, Balsers, obviously, we should look to bring back. Three years for him would be fantastic. Nick Paul as well. I'm not against bringing back as a fourth line option, he's looking for a little bit more money than I'd prefer to give him. 85% would be 1125. That's not that's not too bad for a fourth liner. Uh, Morgan Klimchuk, for obvious reasons, is going to be dropped. And we're good from there. So yes, four centers without Tierney. It's a little bit shaky. I mean, obviously, the plan is I don't know if Colin White can be a number one center, but with White. Batherson, Brown, Schlappick, Norris. I mean, we should have the talent to pull this off, I would hope. Uh, Jace Howerluck here. Three-year deal works for me. We used him a bit in the Florida Panthers series not all that long ago. 115 for three years. Pretty good deal for him. Philip Schlappick, Schlappick, Schlappick. I, I need to look it up again. People tell me all the time the different ways to say it. There's numerous ways. Uh, you're over the min, so we'll go 85%. I mean, one by three, three by one, call it what you will. Works for me. Matthew Pekka, uh, no real reason to hold on to you. I'm sorry. Uh, JC Badan, we will look to hold on to. I mean, unfortunately, Brady's not happy about and nor is Bobby Ryan happy about me. Wow, everyone's pissed about me letting go of Matthew Pekka. Turns out we should have held on to him, I suppose. Okay, so from there, we're looking good. It's just a question of what is our cap space going to look like heading into free agency. So Scott Sabrin is back. Ooh, Connor Brown rejects. Okay, we're still going to have to negotiate. Uh, Anthony Duclair rejects. Mark Borowiecki rejects. Howard Luck rejects. Nick Paul is back, England's back, Balsers, Bodan, Schlappick rejects, Yaros. Wow, not that many players right now are investing in uh, in the team and the uh, the goal here. So this is problematic. Now, Borowiecki still willing to come back. I think to pull this deal off, you know, he does, he's probably going to want the two years. I mean, this is it. This is the last offer for Borowiecki. And it's 2.05 million for the two years. And if Boro doesn't accept that, he's on the way out. Christian Yaros, again, we'll look at a three-year deal 
and we'll see. Well, here we'll have to offer him the two-year deal instead because he already uh, declined the three-year deal. We'll see if he's willing to accept this at 1.1 million for the next two years. Again, if he rejects that, he's probably gone. And from there, we're good on defense. Connor Brown, I'd love to be able to hold on to you. He already rejected the one-year deal, so we'll go for the two. And if he rejects this, Connor Brown's going to be hitting the open market. It's going to be 265 for this uh, contract, these two years, if that goes through. Anthony Duclair, still willing to come back. I mean, I offered him the four, and he wasn't willing to accept. So I can't help but think that Anthony Duclair is going to be walking here. We'll try three years with the 85% trick, but it's not looking too good. 3775 for one Anthony Duclair. If that goes through, and for our centers, I mean, Jace Howerluck, we went for the three year deal. He wasn't about it. We'll look for the two year deal here, and we'll see if this works for him. It would be 105. And then schlappic, schlappic, schlappic. What are you going to do? I mean, we went for the three years. No, we went for four years with him, didn't we? So let's let's try for three and see what happens there. Again, actually, no, I think we went. Yeah, we did go for three. I'm going to go for four. Highly doubt he accepts it, but he's an RFA. So, I mean, even if we piss him off where he's like, no, I don't want to resign. We should be okay. We'll see if he's willing to accept that. I highly doubt it. See what happens. We move forward a day with these negotiations. Connor Brown rejects again. Duclair rejects. Borowiecki, Howerluck, and not a single player accepted the offer. So we're in a lot of trouble here. Mark borowiecki has gone. I tried it one year. I tried it two. Mark Borowiecki is leaving the Ottawa Senators. Christian Yaros as an RFA... I think I tried at uh, two years. I think I tried at three years. So now let's try at a one-year deal, and we'll see what we're dealing with at 9:25 for the season. If he rejects that, he goes to the open market under uh, RFA status. And now for Connor Brown as well, he rejected one. He rejected two. If I'm not mistaken here. It's weird that wait is it was it supposed to be Connor Brown at that particular deal? You know what? Let's just let's just go for this again. I'm pretty sure we already did this exact offer, but it'd be 2.6 million for Connor Brown if that goes through. Anthony Duclair, I'm gonna just try to get him back on a one-year deal. That's pretty much all I can look to do. I hate to say it though, but I'm pretty sure Anthony Duclair is not going to be an Ottawa Senator next season at this rate, which is a pretty massive loss for this team and then for Jace Howerluck I think again as well a one year deal is about is about the best we can do we'll be able to offer him league min and hope that that works out or just above league min and then Schlappick as well so the good thing is I mean with the majority of these players it's RFA is that we're risking losing but obviously that still doesn't help the situation here as 725 will be the deal there. Let's move forward another day. Brown rejects. Duclair, Howerluck, Schlappick, Yaros all reject. We're probably done for here with these guys. So we'll qualify Yaros. We will qualify Connor Brown. We can't do much about Anthony Duclair, but we'll send out qualifying offers to all of our RFAs. And then again for Duclair, one year deal wouldn't work. I think I offered two, three, and four as well. We'll give it one more shot with a four-year deal just to see if this magically goes through. I doubt it will. Again, Anthony Duclair likely to be away from the Ottawa Senators next season. There we go. Okay. Anthony Duclair going to free agency. That is a major loss for this team. We will renegotiate with these four RFAs once we are actually in the free agency period. So... That absolutely sucks for the sake of this team. That really does. We lost Borowiecki. We lost Duclair. We have some holes to fill in this lineup now. I'll be intrigued to see how well we do that. So as you can see, in terms of the cap floor, 
we're looking all right. I mean, we do have some money to spend, and I forget here. Under contracts, it should tell me again what the cap floor is. There's somewhere beyond the... I forget, where the hell does it tell you where the cap floor is? You'd think I'd know this. But there's one screen, and I'm 99% sure it's the contract screen. <laughs> but there's normally a screen where it's like, hey, here's just outright the cap floor, and I swear I can't find it half the time. <laughs> Regardless, we'll be okay. We do have money to spend, so for now we're fine. Let's see what options we have with the coaching staff, because obviously we need to fill out this roster. Now, there is an argument in terms of, you know, like, role with, you know, coaches. Should I only be able to hire coaches and scouts within their role? Uh, that is certainly an argument. I didn't see anybody suggest it, but... You know, it could it could be done that way. We wouldn't have the best uh, staff in the world, I can promise you that much. But it could be done. Hmm. Regardless, Scoville here. I mean, we don't even know what our or what our you know scheme fits going to be heading into this next season. We know he doesn't fit in well with Thomas Shabbat, but we don't know what this whole you know what the whole situation is going to look like heading into next season. I'm still going to send Scoville an offer. You know what? I think I might do it within the lines of just what they're asking for. So we'll send out Scoville, an offer to him. We're going to send out an offer to Saunders. He has quite a few offers. We'll send out an offer to Emilio Allison. And we'll send out an offer to Jody Donald. I mean, we have to figure out the head coaching situation first to then know what associate and assistant to hire based off of their teaching specialty. So let's go to AHL head coach as well. Like I said, I don't know if I want to do it this way, but I honestly don't hate the idea of doing it this way. Although, hmm, <laughs> interesting situation here. Uh, let's, uh, you know, hmm, this one's tough. Because I highly doubt without the extra money that certain coaches accept the offers that I'm sending out. Let me know Let me know what you think, but I actually am going to hire staff members within the role that they're looking for. Let me know what you think of that idea. Uh, we can always just alter our coaching staff heading into next season anyway. But I kind of don't hate that idea. It's just, is there going to be too big of a limitation on the team, essentially? Now, we are going to need goalies, uh, goalie coaches, of course, and we're going to be able to hire whoever we want for that. And we're going to be looking at Pispinen for the NHL goalie coach offer. And we're going to be looking at, not Marchant, we're going to be looking at, was it Bemstrom or Lidstrom that was way up there? It was this dude here, Magnus Bemstrom, and hopefully you're good with being the AHL goalie coach. I think we're going to do the same thing when it comes to scouts as well. I, I do love series with limitations. And this is going to be one of the more interesting ones. So obviously we don't need Pro Scouts. Our W Scout, oh god. <laughs> well, uh, we'll just send an offer to Marcel Poulin. We'll send an offer to Parento. This is going to be interesting if we actually do it this way. Uh, and obviously now, you know, some of these, you know, more than one person can accept the offer. So I should really only send out one uh, let's just go for Jalen Payer for the hell of it. Our Q scout. Uh, let's go for Gervais Chouinard, because damn it, the Senators are finally going to start trying to appeal uh, to the French-Canadian audience that the Habs have just completely dominated for however long. Uh, for USA scouts, we're going to need three. So Theodore, Malik Chow, and we'll go for Jaffrey. And of course, if there are... You know, retired players, this works out pretty well. So Europe scouts. Oh boy, so we have Europe, Scandinavia, and Russia. Uh, so for our European scouts, let's just say you're the NLA. You can go with the DEL. And I know I can check to see like how good they are in each of those regions, but what are you going to do? So we're going to need our four Euro scouts, Scandinavia. We're going to look to hire three. I will send scouts to the Alsvenskim for the first year or two. And then obviously we're going to need some extras anyway uh, when it comes to uh, ROW, which is going to be a factor for the first few years. So that's handled for the moment. Let's see who's out there in terms of free agency 
and really what we're going to be able to do and how much, again, how much money we have to spend. We are quite a ways under the floor right now. We have $34 million in space. When you look at the goalies on roster, I mean, we need a starter. There's no doubt. We need a starter. And then we'll have five goalies on roster. <sighs> okay, so a starting goaltender is 1,000% necessary. For our defense, we have Shabbat, Zaitsev, Brandstrom. Yaros, we don't yet know. So obviously we need some NHL. We just need some NHL caliber talent here. That's what we need. <laughs> and we need some pretty good prospect development from this season. So again, in terms of free agency, no limitations aside from asking price. I can't hand out more money uh, than is necessary. So we'll look at prospects first. Aiden Hill's available, as is Linus Allmark. Interesting. And then you have Arvid Holm as a backup. Now we, had, you know, we do have four goalies under contract already, so we only have two spots. Could look to bring Robin Leonard back to Ottawa. His overall's down. That's got to be a morale thing, you would think. So there's Crawford, there's Leonard, Anderson, and Holtby. I mean, the obvious move is either Allmark and Hill, or we go for Robin Leonard. Do we want to spend $4 million on a goalie? Absolutely not, but the way goaltending works in franchise mode. So Aiden Hill is going to be our first target. I could send him a three-year deal to hope he'd be an RFA at the end of it. I don't really want to pay him 1.4, so we're just going to see if Aiden Hill is willing to accept that initial offer. And we're going to go for Linus Allmark as well. Oof, not that I really want to send you that much, but... We're going to go for Linus Allmark as well. Our goaltending is likely to be rough next year, as we knew. For defensive prospects, I mean, you know, 25-year-old Pulak and then Graves. There is Eric Chernock, but obviously he's an RFA. So not looking too good in the prospect department on the open market. I mean, you have Benning, Suchi, Forsling, he's an RFA, though. A lot of 25-year-olds, 24-year-olds as well who aren't really going to develop. Segan Toller is an RFA. So we don't really have that many great prospects. I don't plan on going after any RFAs. We can't really afford to give up the assets. We're obviously not going to pay Tyson Berry $10 million bucks. We're not going to pay Petrangelo that much money. We could look at bringing in Dylan DeMello again. Former senator, of course. I mean, Petrangelo for $6 million bucks at that price is pretty good. Mm. And then Justin Schultz there as well at five. But we have to be really careful with the big money contracts that we hand out. we got to be super careful. So someone like Dylan DeMello, Cody Cece. <laughs> we can reunite the band. We could send Borowiecki a contract. Off. Well, actually, I mean, Borowiecki, yeah, he wanted to leave. I probably won't send him an offer. We can bring Zdeno Chara back to Ottawa which I would much prefer that to happen than to see him go to a team like Edmonton. So we're going to send old Captain Zidano an offer here. And then in terms of other like decent deals, I mean, there's not a ton out there right now. So, you know, I do kind of like the idea of maybe trying to bring back Dylan DeMello and Cody Cece. As absolutely insane as that is. But right now they don't have offers, so the price might drop. Let's see who we have here for wingers. As Is that Craig Smith? Jesus. I'm going to go Craig Smith. He had a really good first year. Uh, we'll actually just look at forwards in general. So Taylor Hall is obviously the, you know, the gem of this class in terms of forwards, but there's no way we're going for him. It's just not worth it to us. Now, Anthony Duclair did want to come back. I just couldn't work out a deal with him. And, I mean, Duclair for four years at 4.6 is still pretty good. And, obviously, like, Derek Broussard is there. Oh, God. Then we could look at uh, some value options with some veterans. Bringing the Mesnikov in could work pretty well. Ilya Mikheyev up to an 82. There's Soderberg. There are some pretty good players here looking for some pretty cheap deals, like Josh Levo, Jesper Foss. There are some value contracts here, but obviously they're not going to be needle mover moves here. <laughs> I think Ilya Mikheyev at that deal, though, is... That's a good way to go. I'm going to send Ilya Mikheyev an offer. I think we'd be dumb not to. But yeah, for Duclair, 
I think we're just going to have to let him go. We're going to be pretty conservative with the money spending here in the short term until we really get this series on track and figure out exactly what we want to do. So there are some players, you know, for the Ducks fans, we might bring in Derek Grant. We'll see. But for now, let's at least see what happens with those initial offers. And then again, we'll see uh, what the money total is looking like. And of course, there are some RFAs where that still needs to be set up. So Scoville actually accepted our head coaching role, which is fantastic. Great news for us. Saunders, I mean, would have left. Obviously, you know, these dudes that we're offering or that we offered the NHL head coaching job to are out. Maurice, very French, is our new AHL head coach. And now at least we know, of course, with these other offers, with these coaches, we did get our goalie coach. And we're bringing in some scouts as well. So good stuff there. And we'll figure it out uh, from here. And now we actually have an idea of who we want to bring into this coaching staff to play off of the other people. So I actually kind of like I kind of like doing it this way. i got to be honest. I, I agree that there, there probably should have been limitations. We didn't hear back from the other goalie coach that we sent an offer to, which is a shame, but that's okay. So for our scouts right now, we have two Liga scouts, which obviously we're going to change one of them over to the SHL, and that is going to be Thomas Dahl. Absolutely. So Thomas, I, uh, I'm not allowed to relocate you yet, but that's going to happen. Yeah, we're still going to have to sort this out. We still have some offers that are up in the air. For now, though, we know we have a forward-based head coach, which means for associate coach, our top offer is for a defenseman. And then our assistant coach, there's generalists that we could go for. So clearly right here, Boyce is the is the top option to go after. Matthew Boyce, if you'd like to be our associate coach, feel free. And then for our assistant coach, we need a generalist, which is either going to be Keegan Anderson, uh, Mikus, Peter Mikus, the Mikus. Or it's going to be, imagine if it was Tommy Salo. It's not. It's Tamu Salo. And let's see. We also have Max Mebus. God, I wish he'd sign. That's great. What a name. We should be good from there. I don't think really too many uh, former players signed either. Okay, so we're good. And then our AHL head coach was a defensive specialist. So we're going to need some other specialties here. Associates. Oh, God, C minuses, huh? And then for an assistant, ooh, okay, I, I kind of hate this idea now. <laughs> I kind of hate this idea now. So he was a defensive specialist. Oh, boy. All right, who has the best teaching? So you're a defensive, you're a defensive. C minus, how far down does the list of C minuses go? Holy shit, there's a ton of them. Okay, so we'll just do this instead. Okay, so there is a generalist here with the best teaching. That is Conroy. Connor Conroy, you're going to get the deal there. So we need a forward specialist here. The highest grade is a D. Oh, God. Oh, boy. And, of course, this is where all the goalie coaches just happen to go. So, yeah, it was a forward specialist that we needed. So Henrik Olas. Hola, Mr. Olas. You are my first target. Is there another forward-focused coach? Not really. So we'll see what happens with that particular setup there. Whew. All right. Melnick mode, staffing options. Allison went elsewhere. That's fine. That was a head coach offer. Uh, we do, have, of course, uh, have our AHL head coach as well. So that's fine. These people are going to continue to decline. We'll just see what we're dealing with in the aftermath. There are the other scouts that we sent offers out to. We got to see what happens here with the likes of Aiden Hill. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. We'll sim another day. We should get answers. Malik Chow signed. Ilya Mikheyev signed the deal. Aiden Hill signed the deal. Anders Nilsson's not happy about that, but screw you, Anders. Don't really care. Uh, Linus Allmark also signed. Good stuff. So right now, I mean, the goalie situation solved. It's going to be between Aiden Hill, Anders Nilsson, Zdeno went to Nashville. Uh, but Allmark signed, Mikheyev signed, Aiden Hill signed. So we have three preferable backup goaltenders that can likely uh, battle for our starting role heading into next season. We'll advance a day again as Boyce signs. I just need to clear up all of these ridiculous amount of contract offers, and then we'll see 
how many roles we have to fill here. Okay, I think we're good. So back to the coaching staff. And we'll see. We just need that AHL associate coach and goalie coach. I mean, in the AHL right now, it needs to be a generalist, associate, and a goalie coach. So let's see what we can do. We need a generalist associate. C- minus is the best that it's going to be. And again, Conroy was the best that we could get. Unfortunately, uh, not all that good, or he wouldn't accept. So, Bjorn Muller. We have Caden Avani as well. And then for the goalie coaches, again, we can send out an offer to whoever, I would say. And we're going to be looking at Bartovic because Bemstrom declined already. And we'll see if that goes through. And then for our scouting department, we do have too many W's, which is fine, because we can move U to ROW, most likely. So I think we're going to fire Poulan. Probably not a great idea, but it's fine. So you're going to be an ROW scout. You're our W. We have the O. We have our three U.S. locations. We have our four European scouts, our SHL Liga and our Svenskan scout, and our Russian scout. I think we're good. Good, of course, being a relative term <laughs> to what this team is looking like, but... It's taking shape, at the very least, with the limitations, the money spending spending limitations that we have. Now, we still need to spend some money here, which is good, because obviously we have spots on the roster that we need to sort out. There isn't a limitation in terms of playing, you know, guys within their role. I can do whatever I want in that aspect, which is incredibly nice. Otherwise, this would be even more ridiculous. So let's take a look here. For defense, Ryan Pulock is the top option. We'll have to see, of course, where other players went. I'll check that in a moment. Now, Haynes, he wanted to, wanted to go. But Mark Borowiecki, I'm intrigued at bringing back. We just couldn't come to a deal. I'm going to see if we can get him. Now, of course, the 85% trick for free agents, it, it doesn't work. So that's why I'm saying, like, okay, I just can't offer him more than what he's looking for. But Borowiecki on that deal, that's fair enough. For the memes, I'm going to try to bring Cody CC back. I doubt he accepts this. He is likely to go to Los Angeles, but I prefer it to be a one-year deal for him. And we can sort out some of these other offers a little bit later on. Obviously, guys like Cam Houston and England, who are likely to drop, are available. Uh, Ryan Graves is available. We're not the only team interested, two by two. And, you know, yeah, no, we'd be dumb to not send Ryan Graves an offer at this point. And then you saw Rikal is there, Derek Pouliot, we should be okay from there. So for our forwards, I mean, Taylor Hall, we just can't afford to spend that much money on one player. Not named Alexi Lafreniere. Justin Williams, Koivu. I mean, obviously I'd prefer to not sign veterans who are probably guaranteed to see their overall drop. Evan Rodriguez is looking for way too much money, but out of the 82 overalls, uh, Nemesnikov, it's a pretty good shout. And we'll see if that goes through on a one-year deal for him. And then for the 81s, I mean, Josh Levo is looking for a really good deal compared to Tyler Ennis. We do have competition from Winnipeg, though. And then for 80 overalls, there are quite a few. So obviously, like Gagne and Shane are out of the equation. Bringing Jason Spezza back to Ottawa is absolutely something that I want to do. So $31 million to spend. We'll see what happens. Who knows? Maybe we do end up sending a deal to Taylor Hall. Ryan Graves accepted immediately. That could be a decent little move for us. Josh Levo goes to Winnipeg. We'll see what happens here. Avani declined the offer. Uh, Bartovic also declined an offer. We're struggling to get an NHL goalie. Cody CC goes to LA. No real surprise there. We'll take a look at how free agency has panned out so far. There haven't been any deals. Uh, I'm only going to point out the biggest deals, of course. But you know, Cody CC going to LA. We'll see what else happens here. Troy Stetcher stays in Vancouver, and of course, we still have RFAs that we need to work out deals with. But I'll scroll through for those who care to see. Duclair went to Carolina on a one-year deal. Ryan Strom to Los Angeles. Shattenkirk and Petrangelo to Dallas, both on three-year deals. Tyson Berry goes back to Colorado, which is kind of crazy. Nathan Bolio, Andy Green, of course we knew Chara went on the move. Derek Grant went to San Jose. Tanev to Toronto to Foley to Carolina. 
Eric Holler goes to Winnipeg. Mike Green to the Vancouver Canucks. Fair enough. So let's see who else is out there because we still have some money to spend. I just uh, hate... I, I gotta get out of the habit of not checking what the cap floor is at the conclusion of a season and the beginning of a new one. <laughs> I just... I don't remember where the hell I see where the hell the cap floor is. It's one of these goddamn menus and I don't remember which one it is. <laughs> I could have sworn it told you under view contracts but it wasn't before. Team cap space, cap space, exempt contract. Why is it not there? I don't get it. So for this season, we're going to kind of vaguely go off of, unless I can remember where the hell it is, which I can't, uh, we're going to go off of how close we are to that uh, that first little line there. Under salary cap, we still need to spend more money, so we need some of these deals to go through. And then we're going to have to get a little bit creative. So Mueller is on as a coach, which is good news for us. Nemesnikov signs, Borovietsky signs, Spezza goes to Vancouver, which is pretty depressing. But Nemestikov and Borovietsky are in the fold. We are that much closer to the line there. I think it's probably about $65 million, right? So this is going to be interesting. Now, in terms of cap whales, you know, like, oh, sign to do just to make sure. Some people have been like, you shouldn't be allowed to do that. I might have to do that. <laughs> we'll see. So for forwards, I mean, Taylor Hall, we'd be dumb not to do this. One-year deal at $8.8 .8 million. And that pretty much solves our problem right then and there, if he's willing to do that. Otherwise, we start looking at some of these veterans on one-year deals to try and figure something out. Although Matthias Janmark being there is interesting. I really don't want to sign Connor Sherry to that much. But, you know, Sherry, Janmark, there are options available to us here on pretty good contracts. And honestly, Matthias Janmark, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in for him here. A two-year deal is probably not that bad of an idea, but we'll see if he likes us more than he likes San Jose. And then for our defense, I mean Edmondson, Hamannick. Ugh. That's my response. It's just ugh. We'll see what happens. Let's advance day. Janmark goes to San Jose. No real surprise there. Schlopik takes the qualifying offer. Good stuff. Taylor Hall, we're waiting. What's it gonna be, Taylor? Taylor Hall is an Ottawa Senator for one season, and one season only. And yes, we're gonna try to flip him. There you go, it was about 66 million, 66, 67. That was the cap floor, I could've gone back in another video and looked. So at this point, we're pretty much good. We're gonna have to fill out this roster with two-way deals to really not boost up that cap too much. But we just signed Taylor Hall. He accepted a one-year deal. The market just wasn't there for him. And hopefully, we get a very motivated Taylor Hall, who, of course, in real life, has kind of screwed himself out of some money. But hopefully, here we get the best of Taylor Hall. Look to flip him at the deadline. That's the obvious play. So goaltending, it's Allmark, Nilsson, Hill, Decord, Hogberg, and Gustafson. We'll have to sort out who plays where and really, you know, who makes the best of that situation. Uh, you know, trading Anders Nilsson doesn't seem like the worst idea. Our defense is now Shabbat, Zaitsev, Borovetsky, Graves, Brandstrom, probably Yaros, and then Milanen. And the AHL is going to be Lajoie, Zub, uh, England, Alsing. We need some depth defense. And then for our forward core, to be honest, it's looking good, especially because we have yet to sign Alexi Lafreniere to his ELC. And there is the argument... I would say that maybe we hold off on signing Lafreniere. You know, while the rest of the team continues to build up, maybe it's the best move to hold on and wait to sign him just simply because that way we get, you know, his best years and our best chance to win kind of when he's 20 through 23 before we have to worry about signing him to a ridiculous contract. So there are some uh, options in front of us here. For now, let's see who we can sign to help fill out this roster. We'll bring Freddie Clayson back to Ottawa. We'll look for a one-year deal with him. Uh, Josh Brown, former Florida Panther. We'll look to sign him as well. Who else do we like? Good old Corbinian Holzer. Let's bring in a veteran into the fold. Let's see that. It's going to bring us up to... I mean, we have a decent amount of exempt contracts, so it's kind of tough to tell. Uh, let's go back up to the 76s. Luke Shen. Bring in another veteran. 
And we'll sign Ilya Lyubushkin as well. He would technically still be an RFA. So we'll see what happens there. I want to kind of get you guys a look at what this roster might be. And then a question, of course, at the start of the next episode is going to be, what is the situation as far as the controversy wheel? What month is that going to strike? And are we going to lose a coach? Are we going to lose a scout? Are we going to lose a player as Connor Brown accepts his qualifying offer, which is also great news for us? I mean, in terms of the salary cap, we're right where we need to be, basically. I, I mean, technically, I might be a tiny bit over, but, I mean, for the most part, we're, you know, we're quite hindered with $17 million to spend. And for RFA, is Christian Yaros is the only holdout at this point and we will continue to allow him to hold out because damn it if you don't want to be a part of the team then well it looks like the uh, looks like the market isn't out there for you bud we need a goalie coach and then the staffing is good to go so let's send a deal out to Jorgen Lidstrom send a deal out to Camille Oban Camille please sign Part of it, Hope. Uh, we didn't send an offer to Hope before, did we? Jerry. Every team needs a good Jerry. We'll see if that works out, hopefully. I mean, one of those four has to accept, and then again, we're pretty much good to go. The big money has been spent. Taylor Hall is here. Lidstrom rejects. <laughs> Camille rejects. Are you kidding me? Jerry rejects. Yaro signs the qualifying offer, and apparently we're just not allowed to get a uh, goalie coach. I'm just going to I'm just going to sim. We'll take care of that. We'll get ourselves a goalie coach. But for now, I want to see what this roster looks like with and potentially without Alexi Lafreniere and of course whether or not we have to sign any other players. But the big thing here, fingers crossed, we see a good amount of player development to give us as many options as possible. As in terms of captaincy, I'm not afraid of hurting the morale, if need be. So we're still listed as a rebuilder. No surprise there. Uh, there it is. The minimum cap is 65. 65.7. So that's where it shows it. Uh, we're good to spend up to 70.7. And right now we're at 68 million. So, hey, we're within the confines of the deal. As, whew. So between the likes of Allmark, Nilsson, Hill, and Decord... We need to figure out who's staying and who's going, or at least who is earning that job. Allmark's our highest rated goaltender. Nilsson is like prime fodder to trade, but honestly, we kind of need that contract. So maybe send Anders Nilsson down and rock with Aiden Hill. I kind of like that idea. Let me know what you guys think there. Defensively, it's Shabbat, Zaitsev, Borovietsky, Graves, Brandstrom might be better suited. There's, a, there's an argument for Eric Brandstrom. Send him down to the AHL, let him tear the league apart, see what happens, or play him top pairing, potentially with Thomas Shabbat. I have a feeling most people are going to side with the latter. But you have Wolanin, Lajoie, we actually have quite a few defensive options here, which I'm pretty happy about. The AHL team should be okay. And then forward-wise, of course, now Kachuk. I think we run Kachuk, Hall, and Colin White and see if running White with those two on the top line is enough to boost him up into being a true number one center. He's already a solid second line center. I think he could be due for one hell of a season here, although he's not a great fit with Scoville right now. Of course, he has that big time contract. Well, Connor Brown signed for 2.6 million on the qualifying offer. This team isn't that bad. We just have some pieces to move around. The AHL team's looking like they're gonna be good with Formanton, Norris, Vitaly Abramov, John Gruden's there as well. I honestly don't hate where we're at right now. We might not have the best season in the world, but I don't hate uh, where we happen to be right now. So the setup heading into the next episode, this was obviously a little bit of a marathon, but I kind of wanted it to be that so we can get back into the, you know, into the, uh, the real groove of things. We need to sign a goalie coach. You know, our coaching staff for the most part is good. Our scouting department's good. The big thing will be the controversy wheel to kick off the next episode to see what's going to happen and when 
in terms of when we lose a player. I might even have it be October to February because if it's a player that we just signed here in September and I have to get rid of them immediately, that's going to hurt uh, my GM rep or whatever. And I don't want to get in trouble for flipping, you know, flipping players too early, even though it would only be uh, one option. So with that, I think we're good. I think the Taylor Hall deal is uh, is like right on the wire, by the way, at $8.8 .8 million. You could argue whether or not I actually just broke that. Okay, so wait a minute. The salary cap showing up as $87 million, but you guys would have seen it at the beginning of the episode. It was showing up as 90 heading into the next season. Did the numbers change over already? Okay. I may have made a mistake signing Taylor Hall. Because I think I didn't realize that the numbers had changed over yet. Because it's showing up as $90 million next season rather than this year. So we might have to redo the math on that. That said, actually, here, hold on. Thomas Shabbat. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. So if it is this, Thomas Shabbat's making $8 million. If it's an $87 million cap, then it becomes 9.1% of uh, the team's total cap. So hold on. And then Taylor Hall, at that number, is just over 10%. You guys will clarify it for me. Let me know. Am I going to be punished for signing Taylor Hall when I shouldn't have? Does that just mean I'm not allowed to trade him at the deadline? Or screw it, Dougie, who cares for this one? Let it go, because they're the numbers. It is what it is. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, I am very much looking forward to seeing what this team looks like. Heading into this next season, as we look to set everything up again, what the team's going to look like, multiple options, but I think regardless, we're going to have a pretty damn good team, given the circumstances. I mean, really, it was looking like when we lost to Claire that it was going to be a much worse team than it was. I'm very intrigued to see how this goes down. For now, though, again, thank you guys so much uh, for being patient through the early stages of this. I'm hoping uh, to get back to having uploads every single day. Uh, the Sens video here is going to be the only one for today. We'll have a Detroit episode tomorrow, and then we'll see what happens heading into the next week, where hopefully it's videos every single day. Again, I love you all. Thank you for watching. Again, any questions, comments, let me know. And, of course, you know the deal. Shout out to my patrons on Patreon as well. I love you all. And I will see you guys in the next one. Season 2 with the Sens. We might be okay. <laughs>